Hey, I'm Steve Krentz for Guitar Gathering. Thank you for joining us on this uh, quick little lesson. I wanted to talk to you about getting out of the rut of playing chords the same way all the time. You know, if we had 10 guitar players, nine out of the 10 guitar players, if they saw a regular chord on, on, a, on a progression, a C7 or something like that, nine out of 10 players would play this. And they would probably just do some strumming pattern. So almost everybody would probably play the same thing. That's not what we're talking about tonight. What we're talking about is the other guy. The one that can look at that same chord change and build something musical and magical out of it. That's what we're trying to, to pull out of it tonight. Now there is a PDF that goes along with this lesson, so make sure and download that. The, the link is in the YouTube description down below. And so let's get started. Here's the big idea with this. Um, if you look at your PDF, we're going to talk about if I have a chord, let's say a regular C7 chord. And so there you go, that's the chord that's written on the thing. What I'm talking about is most guys are going to do this. Which is great, but it's boring, and that's what everybody does. And we're going to try and pull more creativity out of that. So one of the things that we can do to kind of take our chord playing to the next level with this is to, I'm going to give you a couple, several things. So look at the PDF there. First thing is realize that you can play other forms of that chord. So all of these things that I'm going to be talking to you about apply, of course, of course to any chord that you come across, but we're going to be focusing in on a regular old C7, regular old basic C7. So, well, if you look at the um, um, first diagram there, you have our regular old open C7. That's kind of our default chord. That's what everybody's going to be playing. What you need to do is try and force yourself away from that, because that's what everybody else is playing. Well, what else could you do? Well, I don't know. There's another voicing right there. Um, what if I did, there's another one up here. There's several C7s all along the way. I didn't write them all out, but there's all kinds of C7s there. So one thing that you can do is just play a different form. Instead of this open form down here, which doesn't sound particularly good on an electric guitar playing those open strings at all, you probably might want to go to a different form. So that's the first thing. Go to a different voicing of the chord. Learn a couple different voicings. I wrote some of them out here, some of my favorite ones there. Another one that you can do is take just part of the chord, part of that voicing. So instead of playing even this whole C7 right here, what if I just took these middle three strings, you know, the fourth, the third, and the second string, and just played that part of the chord? So already we've got a little, a little bit of a cool voicing something different that's happening there. Well, what if I took, what if I'm on that shape? Well, what could we do there? Well, if I take maybe the middle string, middle three strings of that, I end up with this shape. What if I took, you know, here's the whole voicing. I can take little pieces of that. What if I took the top three strings, which would be that voicing. Well, suddenly I have The inner voicing, moving it back and forth a little bit. Uh, what if I did this voicing, but I did maybe the lower strings, the fifth, the, the fourth, and the third. All right, so I'm forcing myself to be creative. What if I took this upper form? kind of the big, you know, six string, big bar form there. Well, what can we do there? Well, if I took maybe just the top three strings, I'm left with that. What if I added that fourth string to it? I end up with this. I did was take the same voicings and you can do part of the voicing. So that's an idea that you can to, you can do to pull a little bit more of a creativity uh, out of a certain guitar part. 
Um, what if I took, instead of the top part of that chord up here, what if I took the bottom and I did kind of a first finger on this low C, second finger on this B flat, third finger on this E. Okay, so we're gonna put on a little bit of a track here and just with those concepts right there, taking various voicings, and I'm gonna try and create a little bit of a more of a memorable part with just those voicings. Okay, so we're gonna put turn, turn on a uh, track and I'm gonna try and play that for you. So those are some ideas, different things that I can play with. All right, so what have we done? We've taken that regular form, I've added some other shapes that I can do, and I've tried to create some other parts from using just subsections of that chord. A chord is just a collection of tones, and I don't have to play the full chord all the time. Here's a G, but I could just play a couple of notes from that G. That's the secret. You want to try and create a part that's musical. I was listening to some great lessons this morning by our good friend Will McFarlane, uh, uh, Musicians Hall of Fame guitarist for Muscle Shoals, the, the famed Muscle Shoals rhythm section down in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. He's got a wonderful series. I would encourage you to look it up. It's all free on YouTube. Will McFarlane and go to his channel, and he's got like 30 second lessons, and he's got about nine, 10, 11 of them, something like that. Just put the, put the playlist on and watch him go. And he explains this concept about how he was rarely, he's played on so many legendary recordings, and here he, he says, I rarely play more than two notes at the same time. Breaking the chord apart. What else can we do? Do, let's look at the bottom of page one there on our thing. I can break the chord apart even further and just do a couple of notes. Let me just take that chord into its very essence. Okay, so let me just take it down to one note. So look at the first idea there. What if I had a C7 chord? What are the notes in a C7? A C, an E, a G, and a B flat? Okay, so what if I took the C and maybe let's put the B flat in there too, the flat and seventh. So I got a C and a B flat. And I'm gonna try and create a part with just a C and a B flat. So I could I could do something like um Every now and then I'm sneaking in a little G there. I'm just doing a little bit of muting down, down here uh, with my palm of my hand, just barely kind of touching the strings here. Just two notes, put on that track again, that same one, and I'm gonna do these little two note grooves. One, two, three. That's an idea. What if I took, I can even take the C and the B flat and put those in different octaves. One. So, um, that's an idea. I can do octaves. Uh, what was that little fun thing? That was, uh, I'm doing a C here at the uh, fifth, or excuse me, first string at the eighth fret. I'm gonna hit the B flat 
on the uh, second string at the 11th fret, and I'm going to bend that B flat up to a C. <laughs> little little disco lick there. And suddenly I found a part that is unique to the instrument. It's going to stick out in the mix, and it's giving me something cool and interesting to play. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get away from this. Which is what everybody else is going to play. We're going to try and force some creativity out of us. So I could play two notes. Now, um, uh, someone mentioned here, I could do the tritone. So what is that? Okay, well, in any chord, the two most important notes of the chord are the third and the seventh, what kind of seventh it is. So in our C seventh chord, the third would be the E, C, D, E, okay? So that would be this note. The seventh in a C seventh chord is the actually the flatted seventh, which would be a B flat. So those two notes there, an E and a B flat are really the defining notes of that chord. So I could really do this. I can't tell you how many times I've been on stage, asked to play something, uh, play with some group, I don't know the song, I don't know anything, all I know is the key, and all I'm up there is doing stuff like this. I don't know the chords, I don't know anything, I just know what key we're in, and I'm just going to do a little two-note groove out of that. Maybe I can start kind of working my way around in the scale. Now, it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice to get that groove down. Of course, when you play it for the first time, you're going to feel uh, funky and, and it's going to sound clunky and wrong. Okay, so, so don't, worry, don't let that throw you. Just try and put on a little groove and try and go. Get that muting part and try and get the internalize the tempo. And then eventually start mixing in some other tones. Okay, so we've done two note groove. I can do the tritone, the third and the seventh. What else could I do? Oh, I could do um, uh, over, oh, I could do a sliding sixth riff. So let's say I'm up here. Here's a good, or let's go back down here. Here's a good thing, typical in blues. Oh, that's a good one there. So if I'm on, if I'm on this C, I'm going to slide up with my first finger, which is on the uh, third fret. And it's covering the last three strings. And I'm going to slide up two frets, up to the sixth, back down. You hear it all the time. What if I just took the outside strings there? Okay. That little sliding riff, you hear that all the time. What if a chord moves to an F, maybe? Well, I could do it up here, and on from F's fifth to sixth. It's, it's a classic blues lick, okay? So that's how you play it on the upper strings, the third, second, and first strings. But if I wanted to play the same thing, on the inner strings, maybe the fourth, the third, and the second, I'm not a genius. All I do is just think of the notes. So I've got a, a B flat. I've got a D. There's a play there. There's a G there. So if I played it here, that's the same chord as this. Do you see how those are the exact same notes? So if I move it up two frets. Cool lick. Let's get our track going, that same track again, and let's play, uh, let's see how some of those ideas
two note groove. C and B flat, what if I added an E flat in there? those six licks. Great ideas. All I was doing was taking the chord apart. Okay, so you can break up the chord into various little pieces. Uh, there's a great video by Paul Jackson Jr., the legendary uh, studio guitarist out of Los Angeles who played on you know, Thriller and all of the all of these in incredible uh, Michael Jackson songs. Uh, he talks about that concept of breaking the chord apart and uh, creating all of these magical parts with that. So those are two ideas that you can do. Look at the next page. What else can I do? Well, on that C7, I can start uh, uh, expanding the idea uh, harmonically. So I could add, make it a C ninth. Uh, what if I uh, make it a C thirteenth? Starts to sound a little bit more jazzy. Well, here's another voicing for a C thirteenth. Hey, there's a one, another one we're going to talk about in just a second. So all of these, I could add uh, uh, harmonic embellishments on it. another option for you, okay? Oh my goodness, I don't know those chords. Well, that's why I wrote them out there for you, okay? I, if you just spend, you know, the next week learning these four chord forms or learning these, you know, probably six or seven different chord forms, you're gonna be an, an immensely better player at the end of a week. It doesn't matter if it's on the page, it matters if it's in your, your musical mind when you're playing, and that's what we're trying to do. All right, what else can we do? All right, as we come into the home stretch here, uh, look at the uh, middle of page two, we can do chord substitution tricks, okay? Well, here's an easy one. Any, on any sort of dominant seventh chord, here we have our C7, um, I can go up to the third of that chord, in this case an E, is the third of, an e, of a C7, and I can build an E uh, minor 7 flat 5, a minor 7 flat 5 form. But Steve, I don't know any minor 7 flat 5 forms. Hey, I put two of them right down there for you. Here's one of them, first finger on that E, and then you bar that second finger over the last three strings at the third fret. E minor 7 flat 5, up on the inner strings there. Those are my two main ones I use all the time. So over that C7, I now can play these options as well. So there you go. There's a bunch of different options for you to play over a C7. Now, of course, this can be transposed trans, uh, to various keys and various chords, but think of the concepts involved. Instead of just, as soon as you see a chord, go to the D, going to the default, which is what everybody else is gonna do, Try and force yourself to be creative. I can do a little muted part. I can do the third and the seventh. I can do my little sliding sixth. I can add the ninth, the eleventh, the thirteenth. I can add some different chords to it to create a more interesting guitar part. So we're gonna turn on the next track, which is the same C seventh groove, just got a little bit of a shuffle feel on this one. And I'll see if I can incorporate a bunch of those and see if you can uh, uh, figure out which, which concept I'm using. How on, two, three, four. Little C7 
single note. What if I did those six? embellish the chord. C13. Let's do those minor 7 flat 5s. There you go. So, different ideas of taking the chord, avoiding the default, and trying to create an interesting guitar part out of it. That's the goal. You can transpose these into, into various uh, chords and keys, but the concepts stay the same. Try and build something creative in your guitar playing. Don't just play the default, which is what everybody else does. Try and pull that creativity out of yourself. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Keep up the great work in your playing. Check out some of these ideas. We'll see you guys next time.